Hey, housemates! You know, the plague is hopefully ending soon. Hopefully. And that means we'll be able to have people over for a game night, maybe a big party with lots of games. That means we'll win something with a large player count. Guys, want to play Seven Wonders? So there you are. An ancient Greek sailor arriving in a port city in a small kingdom of Caria. You saw the immense structure from the harbor, and now as you wander the streets, you can't believe your eyes. Supposedly this spectacle, covered in marble and layered in 150 feet of statues, was built for some long dead king, whose very name has already started to redefine the word for tomb. And you think to yourself, man, the folks back home won't believe this place. The mausoleum of Halicarnassus is maybe one of the lesser thought of wonders of the world today. But it's just one of the incredible sites you will build and use as a cornerstone of your kingdom's economy to muster resources from neighboring nations and build a legacy to last through the ages. Seven Wonders is a card drafting game, which means you'll generally be given a hand of cards. You pick one, play it, and hand the rest off to your neighbor. You'll play out seven cards through each age of the game. As people visit your city, you'll begin to see the flow of resources. This is represented by brown and gray cards, which become the resources flowing through your city gates. And you play them on the table in front of you in such a way that they're visible to other players. There are seven types of cards in the game, including those brown and gray cards. Red is military, yellow is commerce, blue is points, and green is complicated points. And they all represent structures you're able to build in your city in the service of establishing which of the seven wonders is the most wondrous. The cost of a card is in the upper left-hand corner. If you don't have the resources yourself, you might be able to buy them from your neighbors using coins. And as the game is split into three ages, many structures allow you to build their higher tiers as freebies later in the game. While most cards get circulated around the game table and get built as resources, the defining characteristic in this game is each player's unique wonder. Each wonder gets built in stages and each stage has an associated cost. It can be easy to neglect your wonder, which would be bad. No one wants to come see an incomplete Colossus of Rhodes. Completed wonders give a bunch of points, as well as conferring bonuses and abilities. When new players are introduced to the game, it can be a little intimidating because there's so many cards thrown at you all at once and then you hand them off to someone else. That's okay, don't worry. After one quick playthrough, you too will be striving to hoard all the green cards. Seven Wonders is such a terrific game. Playing up to seven people, everyone picks their card and reveals simultaneously, which means it can handle a somewhat larger group with very little downtime. After three rounds of seven cards, the game ends and we tally up the score to see who is the most wondrous. Five card types plus wonders plus money gives us seven ways to collect points. Whoever has the most points wins this lovely Easter Island Kleenex dispenser. Wow! Housemates, I'll see you at the game table.